All right, Dave, well, we are about two weeks removed from the end of the season, our first chance to sit down with you and, yeah. and get your thoughts. What are your main takeaways from your first season as Panthers owner? Well, I mean, I think the, you know, it's been a pretty much of a whirlwind when you really get into it, how fast everything goes by. But, um, you know, from the NFL meeting to coming here and, you know, seeing the first practices and such, I think my first takeaway is how much I actually enjoy uh, the Charlotte region and the people here. I thought I would, and I actually do. So that's kind of uh, been fun for me, just interacting with fans and, and seeing people, which I actually enjoy people, so that's fun. As far as from the um, football perspective, and I, I was with the Steelers for 10 years, so um, you know, I was been involved, but the amount of emotional attachment surprised me, how much I care. Um, care about winning, care about losing, care about things that happen in the stadium, care about fans. I guess it did surprise me a little bit how much the emotional feeling is. Kind of like uh, it's a child, in a sense. That surprised me a bit, that feeling of, of attachment or emotion. Well, there's some growing pains then when you have a child, well, right? It's like, it's like having a child. <laughs> you have children, you know there's pains. And, and Nothing's there was, a straight shot. And there was some disappointment this year, which, which we'll certainly get to. But as we as it start with, as you go into 2019, what are the things that you're excited about with this child right now? There obviously were highs and lows of, uh, of last season. And, um, and this, is, this is really the first season that I can put any imprint on. That child, if you will, was given to me. And, you know, I had a, whatever I could do, I could start making imprints. But I want to actually learn the child a little bit, if you want to put it in those terms. So I had to learn the team, learn the people, learn, learn the coaches, uh, learn things and how people act and how they don't act. So, it, you know, there's a little bit of learning. And I, you know, and I think, um, listen, in a sense, I was a rookie, if you want to call that, even though I was with them, with the Steelers. I really wasn't um, on the football side. It was more on the business side. You know, I wasn't really, uh, uh, I, was, I was on the board of directors, but there's very little that you can do on the team side there. So here there's much more interaction and much more thinking and what you can do on the football field. So I think for me, it was a, a bit of a learning experience. And like I said, you know, as a rookie, I'm not a rookie anymore. Well, there's the six and two start and then the one and seven finish. Mm -hmm. When you look at that stretch, that one and seven, in your mind, what went wrong? Well, I think if you go through the whole year and you came into the year and you made, if I made an assessment from the outside looking in, because that's what really my assessment was, um, I think there was a, you know, a very good offense and a very, a, a, an elite defense coming into there. That would have been my outside perception. I think, you know, after a few games, it became apparent that there were some issues with the defense, um, you know, and how they were communicating on the field and, and different things that were going on. Some of those things were addressed with some of the uh, coaching changes that came a little bit, maybe a little bit too late on the defense side. And, and if you take that side of the ball and you look at that and you say uh, what, we, what was and what you would have expected from the beginning of the season, that has to be the bigger disappointment in some respects. Now, there were some changes made after those changes were made. I, do, I think you did see a difference in how the defense reacted and in how the defense played. I think the New Orleans game that we actually lost was one of the best defensive uh, coaching performances of the year. Uh, I think we had a very good performance again in New Orleans uh, Two weeks later, I think Atlanta, we had a couple injuries between uh, Short and um, Shaq that threw us off a little bit. But I think you saw the improvements that were just there. Now, there's other things that have to be done. We have to have you know, discipline and hard thinking. And we'll, you know, we'll make appropriate changes as we see fit. On the offense side of the ball, listen, that is obvious to anybody who watched this team. There's no secrets there. Um, Cam's shoulder obviously was an issue late in, late in, later in the season, the second half of the season, if you want to call it that. Um, I think it's pretty well known that he wasn't throwing in practices. That was probably a problem that threw off his rhythm. Um, and, it, you know, at the end of the season, you know, we couldn't throw the ball downfield, which was a big problem. When a team goes through a one and seven stretch to finish a season, there's going to be questions about changes at the top. You've decided to head into 2019 with Ron Rivera as your head coach, Marty Herney as your general manager. Why is that? Why, why I, uh, stay there? So starting with Marty, I think, you know, I think that uh, he has a good handle, a good handle on the draft, and I'm pretty sure that he can look at the talent we need in the draft to make the team better, which I think he has contributed to 
well contributed to in the future. As far as Ron is concerned, Ron is a good coach. He has a locker room still. He always had, never lost it. If you look through the season and what happened, there were some unforeseen things there. Um, and again, if you look at Camp Shoulder and you really analyze it, you know, there was a couple games there that if but for the shoulder, we would have won. You're always talking with Ron and Marty. Are you able to share some of those things that you're encouraging them to do differently in 2019? You know, there's a lot of different aspects to the game. It's management, you know, coaching, management, players, personnel, um, you know, analytics and stuff like that. Players are key. You got to have the right people in the right position to draft well. Coaches, you have to have the right management managing the people. And I'm going to say that in any business you have, and this is another business, whether it's on the field or off the field. And then it gets to some other things. So with the, um, I think I'm very much focused on not giving away anything, anything that we can for free, in other words. I don't want to see 10 seconds go away. I don't want to see five seconds go away that we should save for one reason or another because of one reason or another with game management or things like that. It's like in my other profession, it's uh, you know discipline, 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 discipline. So I think some of those things, which they do, I think we can get better at. I think every team in the NFL can get better. I don't care that much about other teams. They're not my children. This is my child. You brought up Cam Shoulder a couple of times. How concerned are you about that right now? <laughs> of course I'm concerned about it. I think you know we and him are going to do everything we can to try to make that shoulder better. So I'm not going to be panicking about Cam, Cam Shoulder this year. I don't think we're going to panic about Cam Shoulder this year. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully he's great. Let's face it, we got some great young receivers on this team. They could be better. Well, they'll get better. They're brand new. They're basically had effectively two rookies last year because uh, Samuel's first year he was injured. So we need to be able to throw the ball down the field. And I'm, you know, I'm very hopeful that Cam shoulder will be better as we start next year. Given what's going on with Cam over the last two months, how important is it, whether it's Kyle Allen or whoever, how important is it to identify a backup quarterback you can truly believe in in 2019? It's very important. We have been spending time. We've looked at, the, you know, other people that might be around. And when you really, I think what we're really assessing right now is when we look at Kyle Allen, at least from my perspective, and I've had a lot of discussions with uh, Marty and Ron about this, and, and, um, and Norv and Scott, when you really assess around the league who might be available, of course you have to make, you have to think about it. But you have to also think about it with what you're giving away if you try to do anything too drastic uh, in future years. We're going to look at every option and make sure we make the right choices, no panic choices. It's just not about this season. It's about multiple seasons. You want to build winning teams for the long-term future here. Given that you're going to do everything in your power to get Cam back to health, does that also include encouraging to, say, the football side to improve the offensive line? Because even if you get him back to health, is there also a matter of making sure he can You want me to tell you every draft pick we're going to pick sure, right now? Or not? Would, that, would that help you out? Let's write it down. You, you want to write it, it down? We're going to okay, keep it amongst I'll, I'll do that for you. But sure. Just amongst ourselves we and won't the other tell anybody. two million people are going to watch yeah, this thing. Okay. That many. But just football Listen, philosophy there's obvious, wise. There's obvious things. You know, if, if philosophy wise, I believe great offensive lines give you a lot of optionality. You want to keep your optionality to be good. Okay. You want to let, put yourself in a position to win. You want to put yourself in a position to be lucky, okay, not to be unlucky. So one of those things that might do that might be an offensive line. You know, so, you know, listen, it's well known what we had last year and the problems we had. And you could say that one of the highlights of last year, if you want to talk about a highlight last year, coming in here is the, the job that, uh, you know, Coach Masco did last year. I mean, how beat up that offensive line and how – decent it was. So that was a pretty good job. I think people should appreciate. I know, I know it wasn't perfect, but we had a lot of injuries. Now we have to make it better. Because we don't know you and you're going into your, you, you were a rookie now, now this is almost like your, your rookie offseason still. You're still yeah, I'm in a off rookie. Yeah, I'm in the How off involved are you going to be with the football decision making? Listen, the bottom line decision, you know, I have to trust the people that are working here. And Marty Herney is, you know, is, when you're at this time of the of the year, Marty Herney, you know, to the draft, you know, makes a lot of decisions. Once the players are in there, it's Ron. Okay, I have confidence in those two people. Now it's a question of philosophy and what my philosophy is along with talking to those two guys, what, what we have going forward. I'm not shy about saying what I believe. I also am not shy of telling people to tell me if something's dead wrong or what I believe. Okay, because I, I don't want to have it. I might be wrong. But I'm not shy about this and I'm not afraid to make decisions.
okay, which is a great strength. What have some of the conversations been like as far as how aggressive do you want to be going into free agency? Free agency is an interesting question because you don't know the situation with the different players you're going to get out there, you know, and then you have to know what injuries they have, what injuries they don't have, how, how, how well healed an injury was. I think that selectively aggressive in free agency, um, you know, if, if the right person was available, but we have to be careful about that person. So it's really assessing that person versus something you might be able to get in the draft and what you have to do. And then the question is how much cap space you have and what you have to do with cap space. And again, I'll say this one more time because I want to say it again and again and again, you want to have as many, you want to keep your options open. Options open means you have to have enough cap room to make those decisions.